guys and happy Saturday. Welcome back to another vlog. I don't know if this is gonna be like a little weekend in my life, a few days in my life. I really have no idea. I just felt compelled to pick up my camera and chat to you guys. I'm so sorry as well if you can hear or see this godforsaken fly buzzing around. It's fly season here in Australia and we're still waiting on our dog door, which is like a whole story within itself. I don't even want to get into it. It's so frustrating. We ordered it back in like November, I want to say. Yeah. Obviously, we want Mabel to be able to get out during the day, so we keep the sliding door open a little bit, which is like an open invitation for these flies to come in and ruin my life. It's so annoying. I hate having flies in the house, but that's just where we're at right now. Good news is, though, the final missing piece for the dog door arrived yesterday, so hopefully my dad can help us set that up this weekend. And by help us, I mean do it for us. <laughs> Like, let's be honest, we're not the handiest people. And it's quite like a sophisticated dog door setup, hence why it's taken two months. It really shouldn't have, because it was meant to be dispatched in two days and it's turned into like this whole affair. It'll be good once it's actually in. So we're gonna do that this weekend. Just like a lot of homey stuff I wanted to bring you guys along for. I'm about to hop in the shower, get ready quickly, and then we're gonna head to the shops. I wanna go look for a bar cart. Um, we have this little corner like between our kitchen and our dining area that I think would be perfect for it. It would also be nice to just have that extra bit of storage. Um, and I think it would really like fill the space nicely. We also have to take down our Christmas decorations at some point this weekend. And I feel like once we do that, the house is gonna feel really empty. So a bar cut would look really nice in that little corner. Anyway, I'm gonna hop in the shower. I was gonna put makeup on and actually get ready for the day, but truthfully I've been wearing it all week and I cannot be bothered. I think I need to give my skin a bit of a break. So I've just tried on some sunscreen. Cancer Cancel Face Day Wear Moisturizer, the matte one with SPF 50. I think I've talked about this before, but it's honestly one of my favorite everyday sunscreens, especially for underneath makeup. Just wearing some active wear. I think I might go for a walk just without Mabel Moo because it's hot and I don't want her to pass away. Also, we finally hung up the strips for our shelves. I got these little acrylic shelves months ago and I completely forgot we had them. So I've just put up one. It's not perfectly even, but it's fine. <laughs> It'll do the job. And then I'll see how it looks and how it works. And then we can always add a second one because I bought two, but I thought this would be perfect for extra storage. The one thing that this bathroom lacks is storage. We don't have a ton of counter space and I don't want to clutter it up with all of our stuff. We have this cupboard underneath the sink which is just like not super functional i've tried to make it work as best as i can i swear i just organized this like last week we've got all of my like skincare tampons and stuff in there and then hair care stuff down there and then all of our sunscreens and moisturizers and things cupboard storage is just not quite as functional as a drawer and there are some things that we just want easy access to like our everyday products moisturizer skincare products deodorant perfumes so i think this will add a nice bit of extra storage i'm gonna hang that up when we get home we're gonna head out it was already like 11 o'clock and i haven't left the house yet today so <laughs> this is my book of vouchers we've got indota spa indota spa in Dota Spa. <laughs> oh, we still have the Studio Vino one. We need to use all of these because they expire in like three yeah. months. Yeah. House and Garden, House and Garden. Lovely Jubli. My 2022 goals. Do you want to hear them? How funny. I don't even know I had this. Oh my gosh. Buy our first house. Stay hydrated. Get married. Completed it. Read 30 books. Did not do that. Oh, and my little subscriber tracker and my book tracker. That's so cute. Look, I read so many more books in 2022. That wasn't all of them, but I read so many more than I did last year. past 2 30 we just went and ran some errands i picked up some stuff which i'll show you guys nick's just gone to watch his brother play cricket i am not sorry tom <laughs> just sitting here reading some of my book i'm so close to being done with fourth wing why is this taking me so long like too long i think it's because it's a physical copy and i have not read a physical book in so long i miss my kindle i read so much faster on my kindle and it's just so much more comfortable but for some reason i did this to myself but i only have like Maybe 50 pages to go. So I'm so close to being done. It's 
so good you guys i'm obsessed i'm not a fantasy gal but this this is good <laughs> it's giving gateway drug <laughs> gateway to fantasy it reminds me a lot of the hunger games slash divergent like that kind of vibe but with dragons and the dragon component to this i love like i thought i would hate like dragons that never really interested me but i'm obsessed i'm obsessed the dialogue between the main characters and the dragons i just love um and so yeah, I've really been enjoying it. I will let you guys know my final thoughts when I'm done. Someone said to record myself when I'm done reading it, like the last few pages. So maybe I'll do that. Just been sitting here reading, relaxing, drinking, trying to stay hydrated because it is a hot one today. I feel like this is the summer that we've all been waiting for here in Adelaide and now it's actually here. I'm like, mm, no, thank you. I don't really like the heat, I've discovered. <laughs> I'm trying to think what else has been going on since I last picked up my camera two days ago. Um, started Pickleball, went really well. We had like a little practice just between us, me and Olivia, and we have our first like session, I guess you could say, on Tuesday, and I'm kind of nervous, like low key really nervous. We have no idea how to play, we don't know the rules of the game. We couldn't find a Pickleball court when we went to practice on Thursday, and let's be honest, we don't even know the rules. We tried watching some YouTube videos before we went out, and we're like, this literally doesn't make sense. And I'm the kind of person, like, I learn from doing. So until someone teaches me the rules of this pickleball game, um, we were literally just like hitting it back and forth, trying to get the motion of the ocean and learn the rhythm, I guess, like the back and forth. But yeah, we're pickleballers now. Also tried that healthy KFC recipe I was talking about in my last vlog. It was actually pretty good. Did not taste like KFC in the slightest, I'll be deadly honest. Like, I don't think there's ever gonna be a way of recreating the taste of KFC, but it was a good alternative. It was nice and easy as well. It was literally just cornflakes, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, all crushed up into like a mixture. And then we just put chicken tenderloins into flour, egg, and then the cornflake mixture. Popped it in the air fryer. That was literally it. And then we made some Spud Light mash and some salad and called it a day. It was really good. Nice to try different recipes. That's one of my goals this year is to try a new recipe every week because we tend to cook like the same kind of things and just be a little bit more organized with our meal planning in general, more proactive so that we aren't rushing to think of meal ideas, cooking the same kind of things. Like we've actually put some thought into it. Anyway, let me show you guys what we picked up. Also at some point this weekend, we need to take down the Christmas tree and all of the Christmas decor. We actually just went to the shops and picked up an extra container because we only have one for all of our Christmas stuff. And I was like, that is not going to suffice. So I picked up another one as well as some other bits. We got some more of these highball glasses. I love these ones. We've just broken a few, so I needed to get more. One of our toilet brush holders broke. So we got a new one. We needed some more tea towels. I love these colors and they kind of go with the colors that we're trying to bring in with like our cushions and our artwork. I thought these were Nice. I also got some more of these collapsible storage cubes. I love these for our wardrobe. These ones are really cool. They're like fairy. And then the rest of the stuff is for scrapbooking. I got a set of three ink pad sets, some double sided tape, a wooden stamp set with these cute little flowers. I thought they were really pretty. Some washi tape, these foil gold hearts comes with 50 of them. And then the actual scrapbook itself. Just a fun little project to do. I'm not going to be vlogging this. Or like sharing my scrapbook. I was even hesitant to talk about it because this is something that I want for myself. 2024 is a year of me finding hobbies outside of social media. I've noticed this and I've talked about this with some social media friends, just like creating that separation between your online, I don't wanna say persona, cause this is not a persona, like this is me, you know? Um, as real as it comes, honestly, sometimes a little too real, but like sharing so much of my life, vlogging or documenting nearly every single thing I do and not really having that separation between my social media, which is technically my work and just like doing things because I want to, like when, I don't know, it's just a bit of a gray area between um, doing things because I want to do them and then things becoming work because I'm documenting them. I don't know, it's this real mind game and I've found myself, um, yeah, just wanting to do more things away from the camera, away from social media, for me. I don't know if that makes any sense. So this is one of my things. I will not be sharing it because, well, firstly, it's probably not gonna look very good. <laughs> I'm not the most crafty person. It does take me back though to my card making class days. I don't know if I've ever shared this online and maybe I shouldn't. Me and my sister talk about this all the time, but I used to go to card making classes back in the day. Um, I think I was about like, 10, 11, and I went with my sister, who's like five years younger than me, and we made cards on a Saturday morning. It was great, great fun. So yeah, I won't really be sharing my 
scrapbook antics with you all, which I know is annoying and is why I didn't want to talk about this because it was like a bit of a tease. Let's be honest, you're not really gonna miss much. It's literally me just gluing things down and making them look pretty. Hopefully. But I thought it was important to talk about. I think in this day and age, and especially when social media is your job, there's not a lot outside of that for yourself. And I think it's important to have that. Speaking of, last night I didn't vlog this. Maybe I got a couple of clips. I'll insert them here if I did. My friends and I from work went and did a paint and sip session. Look, look at this. I did this. Can you believe it? I'm actually so proud of myself. I feel like a little kid that's showing off their artwork. Like, look what I did. I did this. I didn't think I had it in me, honestly. Look, the Chanel, don't look too closely. Fake Chanel, got it from Bali. But like the background, a little ombre moment. I'm really proud. I probably won't put it up anywhere in my house just because it doesn't go with any of our decor, but I'm proud of myself. And that was a fun little activity to do with my work friends. Um, so maybe 2024 is the year of being crafty. I don't know. Also, while we're out, the whole purpose of our shopping trip was to look for a bar cart. I want a bar cart right here in this little corner between our dining area and the kitchen. I think it's like the perfect little nook for it. And so I was looking in the house and garden because we have a bunch of vouchers from our engagement party and our wedding. So like literally our engagement party was almost three years ago. So we had to use them up. We didn't end up finding one that we liked, but we did get a whiskey set for said bar cart. Do either of us drink whiskey? Absolutely not. But this just screams bar cart to me. When I think bar cart, I imagine this, a whiskey set with a little decanter thingy. So don't have the bar cart, but we do have the whiskey set. I've actually seen one on a Temple and Webster that I think I like the look of, so maybe I'll order that tonight. But yeah, I am now going to sit down. I need to do some voiceovers for some short form content, so I'm gonna do that. I've filmed everything, I filmed it on Thursday, so I've got my goals video, my pay to routine. I actually need to get some B-roll for that, now I think of it, so maybe I'll film that now. And my grocery shopping, like how we shop on a budget video. So yeah, I have lots of content that I need to sort through and um, edit, do voiceovers and stuff. But yeah, I think tonight we're gonna make nachos and I think we're gonna go see the new Wonka movie, um, which we've been meaning to see for a while, so. It's a chill Saturday. Do you want to say hi, Mumu? Everyone loves your hair. They say Mumu looks like Prince Charming or Leonardo DiCaprio. Which one? Which one are you? Honestly, the amount of comments this girl gets about her hair, not only online, but also, oh, okay, that's enough. <laughs> but also in real life is astounding. It's just so beautiful. I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you, yeah, if we're talking.
12 hours. The Christmas tree has been packed away. The decor is down. It is a sad, sad time. The house feels really empty, especially this quarter. Our Christmas tree was really like filling the void. And now I'm like, I need to do something with this godforsaken blank wall. So that's my next project. Um, But I ordered our bar cart. I'll show you guys. Maybe I'll insert a photo here of what it looks like. Um, I got it from Temple and Webster. It's about half my house is Temple and Webster at this point. They just have the best stuff. And I think for the price, the quality is actually good. Like I haven't had anything that I don't like. All of our dining chairs are from Temple and Webster. Our coffee tables, Temple and Webster. Rugs, Temple and Webster. Bar stools, Temple Webster nightstands also Temple and Webster. They have not let us down once since moving into this house. Um, let me see if I can find it. Bar cut. I was really torn on what color we wanted because Sorry, that's my alarm. It is Monday morning, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of torn on what color I wanted because our house is predominantly like quite neutrals, lots of woods. We do have some accents of black, like our coffee machine's black, the barstool legs are black, but we don't have a ton ton of black and I wanted something obviously it's gonna be near the dining table we think if it fits fingers crossed um didn't measure it if it doesn't fit we'll put it over there but yeah because it's gonna be near our dining table I thought black would maybe look a little bit too harsh so I went with this like brassy kind of gold color I think it would hopefully blend quite well and it looks like a very similar color to our kettle and our toaster so this is what it looks like the Santa steel bar cart in the brass color um i'll see if i can find a better photo it gives you a bit of a visual it was on sale because they're still having their boxing day sale like three weeks later and i'm excited we'll see what it looks like when it arrives that was our day yesterday just tidying up doing a bit of cleaning my parents came over for dinner last night which was lovely the dog door it has been installed my dad literally spent all afternoon doing this the poor man look it's it's functional. We did have to do, well, I say we, my dad had to do a bit of um, finessing and a bit of DIYing because our windows are so tall. Like I think we underestimated just how large our windows are. I remember talking about this when we were getting our blinds, like a quote on our blinds and our curtains and the guy that was um, quoting us up was like, wow, you have like really big windows. And I've just never really given it much thought because this is just our house. Like this is how it's always been, but they really are quite large. So. Yeah, I'll show you guys. Mabel is still getting used to it, which is so weird because my parents have a dog door and she uses it so well. I think it's just such a big change for her and she's being so... <laughs> it's actually so sweet. We've trained her to like sit before she comes inside. So she keeps sitting to go outside. I'm like, no, like you can go through the door now. It's so funny. She's so cute. But here she is in all of her glory. It like perfectly matches our sliding door, which is amazing. It's from La Luna. We just had to extend it a little bit up here, which is fine. It's kind of this like chunk of metal, but it is what it is. Our only other option really was taking out the glass and getting it installed directly into the glass, which I think looks really good, um, but can be quite expensive. And if we want to sell this house one day and the buyers don't want a dog door, like getting that replaced again, just something to think about. So this is very strong and very secure, but it's semi-permanent, so if we need to, we can remove it, but yeah. Mabel's dog door, finally. The house is slowly coming together. We still have all these blankets out on the couch because Mabel's been in heat, which is stunning. She's been bleeding here, there and everywhere. So just to protect the couch a little bit, we've got these down, but yeah, I can't wait for that little bar cut. I think it's gonna look so good and it's a nice shape. It kind of goes with the curvature of our dining table. And then we have this corner, which is looking barren. I think I've definitely decided I want floating shelves here. And then maybe like a plant, a blanket basket. Lots to consider, but I'm gonna head upstairs, get ready for the day. I have to head into work. We don't have our morning meeting this morning, so I can go in a little bit later. Quick little outfit change. I've come upstairs to get ready for the day. I have work from nine till five today. I think it's gonna be another very busy week. Last week was pretty hectic. So I think it's just gonna be a continuation of that to be quite honest. I don't know for sure. But uh, that's just the vibe I'm getting. I also forget how beautiful my office is first thing in the morning with all the natural light. It is so beautiful. I need to come up here more often, especially on my days off. I tend to come up here in like the afternoon and like work from the couch or my bed in the mornings. But I think it would be a really nice way to start my morning, just coming up here, like actually having a proper work day. Hi. Hello. Where's my Mumu? Where's my Mumu? Oh, hello. Have you been for a nice run around?
Good morning, you guys, and happy Thursday. Sorry, don't mind the iPhone tripod in the background. I was filming some content yesterday. Was it Tuesday? One of the days. I have been for a beach walk, which is a lovely way to start my day finding some middle-aged white men in my Instagram DMs, which has been... <laughs> lovely way to start my day if you follow me on instagram then you probably know one thing that will never cease to amaze me is like the audacity of some people especially like i don't mean to generalize but especially some men it astounds me i would just love one just one percent of their confidence i really would but you know what it comes to the territory when your social media is growing and you're reaching a different kind of audience you're bound to get certain comments and dms and a lot of the time i ignore them but there are some that like just really irk me or i guess like certain moods where i'm like i cannot ignore this like i have to fight back because these people are just gonna do it to someone else that maybe can't handle it um and i think there's it's one thing to have like constructive criticism or to have a different opinion but i think there's a way of saying it in like a nice way like do you know what i mean it actually takes a lot more effort to be mean than it does to be nice um and i think especially when it comes to personal finance i have found a lot of people will like hide or mask their nastiness and try and spin it as them being helpful and like providing advice or telling you what you're doing wrong but in just like the most condescending and like horrible way they're almost like masking their bitterness with trying to be helpful or like trying to come across that way anyway that's just one thing i've noticed <laughs> i love sharing our financial journey and i love talking about personal finance and i hope i never stop yeah there's just some some days where the comments just drive me up the wall and today is one of those days just being deadly honest I also just want to make this very clear because I talked about this in my Instagram story, but I know not everyone follows me on Instagram. None of my content is financial advice in any way, shape or form. I want to make that very clear because I would never want anyone to see what we're doing with our money and be like, that's the right way to do it. I'm happy with our financial journey and where we're at right now, but personal finance is just that. It's personal. It's so personal to you and your circumstances and your situation. And there's no one size fits all. Like this is exactly what you should do with your money. Like there's never going to be the perfect way that everyone should follow like that's just not how it works do you know what i mean everyone's on such a different trajectory a different age and stage in their financial journey with my financial content when it comes to my monthly resets our budgeting and all of my short form content like my what i spend in a day is or budget breakdowns like whatever payday routine like i only ever post those in the spirit of transparency and to open up that conversation around personal finance because money is still such a taboo topic in real life online um and it shouldn't be like knowledge is power and when you take control and are aware of what you're doing with your finances it is so empowering um and that's really why i share our finances and our money in such a transparent and like vulnerable way like it is very vulnerable because it does open you up to those those people and that criticism but if it can help even just one person just feel a little bit lighter about their situation or um i don't know like i grew up and i had the privilege of growing up in a household where my parents talked about money they were very transparent they really raised us in a way to be aware of our finances to save money i could go into like the whole spiel of what my parents did with like our pocket money and stuff and that's something that i would love to do with my future children because i think that really set us up so well with saving and just being good with money i had that privilege and that is such a privilege but i know that's not the case for a lot of people if you've grown up in a household where no one talks about money it's a debut thing like hush hush or your example is not a good one then like how are you to know what to do with your own money like if the only example you've seen isn't the best one like how are you meant to know do you know what i mean and so seeing just like other people talk about finances and what they do like that's just exposing you to different ideas and ways of doing things it doesn't mean what we do with our money is the right way it's just one way and i think just talking about that can be so empowering like conversation is really the key um so yeah anyway i'm gonna go upstairs get ready i have some content like a concept approval that i need to send through to my manager i only got the brief yesterday so quick little turnaround so i need to send through that um and then yeah get ready i'm going for brunch with my friend ash this morning which would be lovely she's a teacher so she's still on school holidays so we're gonna catch up um which will be nice all my friends went to a quiz night on tuesday and i missed out because i had pickleball um so i'm excited to yeah just catch up debrief a little bit with ash and then i think i'm seeing them this weekend anyway and just like that i'm ready for the day i have a bit of time before i need to head out so i'm gonna update my budget i've already sent through my concept for approval to my manager 
for a TikTok brand deal, which is exciting. We just hit 30,000 followers on Instagram and 20,000 followers on TikTok, which is so cool because TikTok scared me. It scared the living daylights out of me before I started. I found it the most intimidating platform. I was like, I have no idea how to show up online in a short form content kind of way. No clue. Like, how is that going to look for me? I don't even know how to edit. I don't know. I don't know what kind of content that I want to put out there in a short form capacity. Like, I felt like I was already covering most bases with my videos. And I'm just a YouTube girly at heart. Like, that's really my bread and butter and always will be. I remember meeting with my manager just after like one of our first calls and I remember her saying something like have you thought about doing short form content like you know would be good and that in that moment for some reason was the push and the confidence that I needed like I just needed someone to bring it up and almost like believe in me that was like the extra bit of confidence that I needed and I think signing with an agency was almost like validation as well. Being like, okay, like some company believes in me enough to want to work with me and want to manage me. I've got this, like I can just try this out, like why not? And so that's when I started like four months ago and it's honestly been the best. So if there's something that you've been putting off because you're scared, please let this be your sign to just start. I promise you it's not nearly as bad as you worked it up to be in your head. Like there's so many other things in my life that I feel like I have just been putting off or haven't been prioritizing or it's always like a one day kind of thing but 2024 to me is the year that I like face my fears get out of my comfort zone like just try new things like pickleball for example I've been talking about doing some kind of social sport or activity for years and I'm really proud of myself for actually showing up and doing it and I think once you do that in one aspect of your life it's really easy you've got like that momentum to keep going and so yeah if there's something that you've been putting off or something that has been scaring you or you've been procrastinating try it like just try if it's not for you then it's not for you but just like do it like if there's something that you are constantly being drawn to and you think about like just do it I swear it's never as bad as you think and here I am like four months later 20,000 followers on TikTok like who would have thought I'm a chick someone literally someone literally recognized me from TikTok the other day so I felt pretty cool I'm not gonna lie I felt like a true TikToker like okay I can call myself for TikToker. Normally when I meet you guys, people always recognize me from YouTube. Like that's always been my platform, but I got recognized from TikTok. I was like, this is so cool. That's also really helped with like my social media diversifying my income, which is like a whole other thing. So just by taking that leap of faith, that's been an unexpected blessing that's come from starting short form content is I'm now doing like TikTok brand deals and diversifying my income. And I have multiple income streams, which is something that I've never thought possible. I knew that it was important. I've heard people always say when you do social media, like make sure you have multiple income sources and not just make money from one platform because it puts a lot of pressure on the one thing, like the one thing that you're doing. And it works for some people. You know, YouTube will always be one of my biggest sources of income, but starting short form content and diversifying my income has definitely, I guess, like taken the pressure off. And I don't know, it's just, it's also fun. Like money aside, I actually just really enjoy it. I think it's allowed me to be a lot more creative and creative in a different way. It's pushed me to try new things. And I think that also translates with my long form content with my videos as well. Anyway, I don't know how we got into this topic, but I'm gonna sit in front of my computer, my computer and update my transactions. What is going on? Um, Let's have a looky. I'm scared. What are we working with here? I did it yesterday. What in the world? Why do I have no recollection <laughs> of updating my budget yesterday? Was I like tripping or something? I literally don't even. Oh, you know why? I did it like 10 o'clock at night, right after Nick got paid. I was like, I must do something with this money. So I already made my transfers for the week. So I just literally just need to update anything that's come out overnight. Like our Netflix subscription came out. Went for a coffee this morning. I'll add that. And then obviously brunch with Ashley in a moment. Cool.